Tulsi Gabbard's critique of figures like Kamala Harris and Dick Cheney and their ties to the military-industrial complex taps into a deep-rooted conservative skepticism of concentrated power. Particularly, her concerns echo a sentiment often shared by the left where the military-industrial complex is blamed for instigating needless wars that fill corporate pockets at the cost of human lives and taxpayer dollars. Gabbard draws from her own experience in Iraq to illustrate how unchecked authority leads to war profiteering. My first deployment to Iraq was in 2005. I was serving in the state legislature at the time. I stepped down from that seat and volunteered to deploy in a medical unit. I was confronted with the high human cost of war. It was the first time in my life that I had experienced and seen firsthand the war profiteering that goes on. For those of you who served in Iraq at that time, and I hear it's still going on in Europe today, KBR Halliburton remains one of the biggest defense contractors profiting off of war. We had KBR Halliburton logos on our porta potties, on our tents, and on our trash cans. A friend of mine who was deployed to Poland recently said, nothing has changed. Now, who was one of the people that profited off of this? Dick Cheney. Where is Dick Cheney today? Dick Cheney is standing proudly with Kamala Harris. Who has said that she is proud and honored to have his endorsement and his support. Now, for the, the young ones who may not remember, Dick Cheney was the architect of the entire disaster that has been created with all of the problems that we're seeing play out in the Middle East today and other parts of the world. He was the architect of the lie about the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. He was the architect behind the regime change war and the destabilization in Iraq that caused such chaos and loss of life and destruction that created the fertile ground for the rise of ISIS. That is the Dick Cheney who Kamala Harris is honored to have his support. So for those of you who may be at home watching, or for those of you who have friends who are still not quite sure who to vote for in this election, I'll make it very simple. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for Dick Cheney. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for the neocon warmongers. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for the military industrial complex. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for nuclear war. This critique resonates with public fears about losing oversight of government actions, especially in warfare. The association between politicians like Kamala Harris and Dick Cheney, viewed as a figurehead for neoconservative interventionism, further stokes concerns about future U.S. military engagements. Gabbard stresses that government should prioritize the well-being of citizens over the greed of defense contractors. Her attack on Kamala Harris, portraying her as an extension of the neoconservative establishment, reflects a conservative demand for moral integrity in leadership. When leaders make decisions that lead to war and the loss of life, Gabbard argues, they must be held accountable for the consequences. By invoking Cheney's role in Iraq, she reminds the public of the devastating impact of past leaders' decisions. Leadership comes with a moral duty to own the outcome, especially when those choices lead to destruction. Gabbard's critique of Harris and Cheney insists that politicians must bear the long-term costs of the wars they support, costs borne by the soldiers, civilians, and communities affected by such policies. Labeling Harris as a puppet for the military-industrial complex, Gabbard underscores a lack of authentic leadership. She suggests that Harris is more concerned with maintaining power and serving corporate interests than genuinely acting in the public interest. This framing taps into a broader disillusionment with modern politics, where insincerity and self-serving agendas dominate. Gabbard's pointed criticism mirrors a public frustration with leaders who continue policies that disproportionately benefit the powerful while disregarding the welfare of ordinary citizens.